Morse function redirects here. In another context, a Morse function can also mean an anharmonic oscillator. See Morse potential. In differential topology, Morse theory enables one to analyze the topology of a manifold by studying differentiable functions on that manifold. According to the basic insights of Marston Morse, a typical differentiable function on a manifold will reflect the topology quite directly. Morse theory allows one to find CW structures and handle decompositions on manifolds and to obtain substantial information about their homology. Before Morse, Arthur Cayley and James Clerk Maxwell had developed some of the ideas of Morse theory in the context of topography. Morse originally applied his theory to geodesics. These techniques were used in Raoul Bott's proof of his periodicity theorem. The analog of Morse theory for complex manifolds is picard lefschetz theory. Basic Concepts Consider, for purposes of illustration, a mountainous landscape M. If F is the function MR sending each point to its elevation, then the inverse image of a point in R is simply a contour line. Each connected component of a contour line is either a point, a simple closed curve, or a closed curve with a double point. Contour lines may also have points of higher order, but these are unstable and may be removed by a slight deformation of the landscape. Double points in contour lines occur at saddle points, or passes. Saddle points are points where the surrounding landscape curves up in one direction and down in the other. Imagine flooding this landscape with water. Then, the region covered by water when the water reaches an elevation of A is F-1. In other words, it does not change except when the water either starts filling a basin, covers a saddle, or submerges a peak. To each of these three types of critical points, basins, passes, and peaks, one associates a number called the index. Intuitively speaking, the index of a critical point B is the number of independent directions around B in which F decreases. Therefore, the indices of basins, passes, and peaks are 0, 1, and 2, respectively. Rigorously, the index of a critical point is the dimension of the negative definite submatrix of the Hessian matrix calculated at that point. In case of smooth maps, the Hessian matrix turns out to be a diagonal matrix. Define Ma as F minus 1 equals 0, Ma is the empty set. After a pass is the level of P, when 0 less than a less than F, then Ma is a disk, which is homotopy equivalent to a point, which has been attached to the empty set. Next, when or exceeds the level of Q, and F less than a less than F, then Ma is a cylinder, and is homotopy equivalent to a disk with a one cell attached. Once a pass is the level of R, and F less than a less than F, then Ma is a torus with a disc removed, which is homotopy equivalent to a cylinder with a one cell attached. Finally, when A is greater than the critical level of S, Ma is a torus. A torus, of course, is the same as a torus with a disc removed with a disc attached. One therefore appears to have the following rule. The topology of M-alpha does not change except when alpha passes the height of a critical point and when alpha passes the height of a critical point of index gamma. A gamma cell is attached to M-alpha. This does not address the question of what happens when two critical points are at the same height. That situation can be resolved by a slight perturbation of F. In the case of a landscape, this perturbation might simply be tilting the landscape slightly, or rotating the coordinate system. This rule, however, is false as stated. To see this, let M equals R and let F equals X3. Then 0 is a critical point of F but the topology of M alpha does not change when alpha passes 0. In fact, the concept of index does not make sense. The problem is that the second derivative is also 0 at 0. This kind of situation is called a degenerate critical point. Note that this situation is unstable. By rotating the coordinate system under the graph, the degenerate critical point either is removed or breaks up into two non-degenerate critical points. Formal development. For a real-valued smooth function f, 
m are on a differentiable manifold m. The points where the differential of f vanishes are called critical points of f and their images under f are called critical values. If at a critical point B, the matrix of second partial derivatives is non-singular, then B is called non-degenerate critical point. If the Hessian is singular then B is a degenerate critical point. For the functions from R to R, F has a critical point at the origin if B equals 0, which is non-degenerate if C 0 and degenerate if C equals 0. A less trivial example of a degenerate critical point is the origin of the monkey saddle. The index of a non-degenerate critical point B of F is the dimension of the largest subspace of the tangent space to M at B on which the Hessian is negative definite. This corresponds to the intuitive notion that the index is the number of directions in which F decreases. The degeneracy and index of a critical point are independent of the choice of the local coordinate system used, as shown by Sylvester's law. Morse lemma let B be a non-degenerate critical point of F, MR. Then there exists a chart in a neighborhood U of B such that for all I and throughout U, here alpha is equal to the index of F at B. As a corollary of the Morse lemma, one sees that non-degenerate critical points are isolated. Fundamental theorems A smooth, real-valued function on a manifold M is a Morse function if it has no degenerate critical points. A basic result of Morse theory says that almost all functions are Morse functions. Technically, the Morse functions form an open, dense, subset of all smooth functions M I A in the C2 topology. This is sometimes expressed as, a typical function is Morse, or, a generic function is Morse. As indicated before, we are interested in the question of when the topology of MAR equals F minus 1 equals Q. Suppose F minus 1, Q minus epsilon, Q plus epsilon, is compact and contains no critical points besides P. Then MQ plus epsilon is homotopy equivalent to MQ minus epsilon with a gamma cell attached. These results generalize and formalize the rule stated in the previous section. As was mentioned, the rule as stated is incorrect. These theorems correct it. Using the two previous results and the fact that there exists a Morse function on any differentiable manifold, one can prove that any differentiable manifold is a CW complex with an n cell for each critical point of index n. To do this, one needs the technical fact that one can arrange to have a single critical point on each critical level, which is usually proven by using gradient-like vector fields to rearrange the critical points. Morse inequalities Morse theory can be used to prove some strong results on the homology of manifolds. The number of critical points of index gamma of F, M I A is equal to the number of gamma cells in the CW structure on M obtained from climbing F. Using the fact that the alternating sum of the ranks of the homology groups of a topological space is equal to the alternating sum of the ranks of the chain groups from which the homology is computed, then by using the cellular chain groups it is clear that the Euler characteristic is equal to the sum where C gamma is the number of critical points of index gamma. Also by cellular homology, the rank of the NTH homology group of a CW complex M is less than or equal to the number of N cells in M. Therefore, the rank of the gamma TH homology group, i.e., the Betty number, is less than or equal to the number of critical points of index gamma of a Morse function on M. These facts can be strengthened to obtain the Morse inequalities. In particular, for anyone has this gives a powerful tool to study manifold topology. Suppose on a closed manifold there exists a Morse function f, mr with precisely k critical points. In what way does the existence of the function f restrict m? The case k equals 2 was studied by R.E.E.B. in 1952. R.E.E.B. sphere theorem states that m is homeomorphic to a sphere. The case k equals 3 is possible only in a small number of low dimensions, and m is homeomorphic to an eels creeper manifold. More homology More homology is a particularly easy way to understand the homology of smooth manifolds. It is defined using a generic choice of Morse function and Riemannian metric. 
The basic theorem is that the resulting homology is an invariant of the manifold and isomorphic to a singular homology of the manifold. This implies that the Mawson singular Betty numbers agree and gives an immediate proof of the Morse inequalities. An infinite dimensional analog of Morse homology is known as Floer homology. Ed Witten developed another related approach to Morse theory in 1982 using harmonic functions. Morse bot theory. The notion of a Morse function can be generalized to consider functions that have non-degenerate manifolds of critical points. A Moore spot function is a smooth function on a manifold whose critical set is a closed submanifold and whose Hessian is non-degenerate in the normal direction. A Morse function is the special case where the critical manifold is zero-dimensional. The index is most naturally thought of as a pair where I- minus is the dimension of the unstable manifold at a given point of the critical manifold, and I plus is I minus plus the dimension of the critical manifold. If the Morse spot function is perturbed by a small function on the critical locus, the index of all critical points of the perturbed function on a critical manifold of the unperturbed function will lie between I minus and I plus. Morse spot functions are useful because generic Morse functions are difficult to work with the functions one can visualize, and with which one can easily calculate, typically have symmetries. They often lead to positive dimensional critical manifolds. Raoul Bott used Moore spot theory in his original proof of the Bott periodicity theorem. Round functions are examples of Moore spot functions, where the critical sets are circles. More homology can also be formulated for more spot functions. The differential in more spot homology is computed by a spectral sequence. Frederick Bourgeois sketched an approach in the course of his work on a more spot version of symplectic field theory, but this work was never published due to substantial analytic difficulties.